Hello, my beautiful XRP holders. There is something very strange happening in the crypto space right now. Now, you guys might look at this page and think, hmm, this looks like a normal Forbes page. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, it depends on how deep you look. If we take a little bit of a look at the actual link over at the top right here, we can start to see why this is actually a very strange web page. This right here says Forbes.com slash basically Rosalind Layden 2022 8 25 Gary Gensler resign and when I made a video about this a couple of days ago there was a nice little page right here explaining why Gary Gensler potentially should resign again in my video I described as well it's not necessarily my opinion it's just something that somebody wrote about with some very logical sounding statements behind it but when checking through like the digital asset investor was already hinting upon it indeed has been deleted. You know, I, I try to check through. A lot of new articles are added. I can watch them just fine. It's literally her latest post that has all of a sudden faded from the platform. Again, mind you, these posts usually do extremely well. You can see her post from last month got 33,000 views. And most likely, if we keep looking through uh, to the post regarding the SEC, you see here, SEC crypto bait and switch, 12,000 views, which are 10 times more popular than a lot of the other posts that she has been making. So it is very easy to assume that this article, with the severity of it, was most likely going to get above 50 to maybe even 60,000 views because of the you know severity and seriousness of that specific piece. That's the average is, I think, 30,000 views per article. Isn't it then very much strange that it's now been deleted? Is it because it's too, you know, too, too harsh on the man? Is it because there's any in uncertainties in there? I mean, you might say there's a couple allegations in there, but at the end of the day, I think that's how literally tens of thousands of people feel. As you guys might have noticed from my videos, I'm always a, a guy that says, man, let people come out for their opinions. If somebody hates me, for example, I definitely think they should be able to express it over on Twitter. I know, baby. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can't hurt me. But in all seriousness, if somebody says something bad about Gary Gensler, albeit on Forbes, as long as it's substantially you know, backed, basically, there's any good logical statements behind it, I don't think that should be deleted. And for context, I believe that this is what it was looking like before. You know, it was a full-fledged article explaining just about why, you know, the policy to serve SEC insiders, not the rule of law, and, and just that things are kind of sketchy over at the SEC. Things are, are not looking that fair. By the way, me watching a video of me, you know, I should actually keep doing this. Keep reacting to myself, which would be kind of funny. Make sure you press that like button, though, if you've not done it yet, because I greatly appreciate it. And let me know down below if you're actually an XP holder. Because what in the world is happening right here? Again, just looking through it right here even, just for, for a small little piece, we can see that it's very much substantially backed. Talking about the new Howey test, the fact they're not doing things so fair. Subsequently, SEC enforcements confirmed Ganser's antipathy to tokens, which goes against legal precedent or precedent and technological neutrality. These are all allegations, yes, again, based on what tens of thousands of people are thinking because this is the way we view it. All this was trying to do is create a dialogue between the SEC and the people to explain, hey, SEC, the way of you handling things is not how we perceive to be fair. Nobody understands exactly what you're doing. Nobody understands exactly why you're making these choices. Make it a little bit more obvious and tell the people why you make these choices. And the best choice that was made right now, I guess, from a Vorps perspective is take the article down. And at first, I was looking through thinking, no, digital asset investor is making a joke about it. But really, I've been trying to find it, trying to find it. But the fact that it's not showing up in her latest archive or anything like that, I'm going to refresh it right now for you guys just to make sure we're on the same page. The fact that it's not showing up right here says something, all right? It says a lot, at least to me it does. But all you can do to kind of help most likely is just go ahead and whenever I put this over on Twitter, you help out with a retweet or so, so hopefully more people see it. At the end of the day, I think Vorbs is big enough where they literally do not care about our opinions, otherwise they wouldn't have taken it down. They know very well that tens of thousands of people were going to look up that article and most likely hundreds of thousands of people would have a question mark or raise an eyebrow and they still decided to get rid of the article anyway, knowing they would get a lot of backlash. So they decided that this was the best way to go about it. Maybe they got some orders from higher up i do not know again this is just my thoughts just a personal opinion not trying to harm anybody through my words right here i'm not trying to say state anything untrue just stating my opinion stating my findings and stating some older content that i found that was publicly available over on vorbs that was yet again in my own opinion another opinion piece which i think should be able to be on there as all her posts are whose side is the cpuc on not low income californians opinion pieces you know literally she's a senior contributor she's been doing this for a long time 
since 2014, all used to be good. And all of a sudden, the post got taken down. I'm not sure how normal this is, but to me, it's kind of strange. All right. I digress, though. So we have a couple pieces on the lawsuit regarding Ripple versus the SEC. One piece is right here. The SEC, to uh, for purposes of Daubert motions only, doesn't object to Ripple's request to seal, one, the identities of non-parties, two, the identities of certain Ripple employees, and three, three, personal financial information for a Ripple employee. It's not a... I don't think this is too big, to be honest with you. It's nothing. It's just the SEC saying, hey, we're, uh, we're kind of fine with you um, hiding a couple of things from the public. And that's as far as this one goes. Uh, this we talked about at length. And again, if you're wondering what the next big step for the Ripple lawsuit is going to be, it is still this September 13th part. All right. Motions for summary judgment and Rule 56. One statements of undisputed facts must be filed by September 13th. Opposition to the motion for summary judgment and responses to Rule 56 we filed October 18th, and replies must be filed November 15th. All these intermediary decisions are, are cool and good, right? If we're talking about, for example, all these um, all these William Hinman parts, but it's all going to play out at some arbitrary exact date. You know, we don't know exactly when it's going to play out. What we know exactly, though, is the motions for summary judgment, which is, in my opinion, the most important part of this lawsuit, and those are going to be filed September 13th or somewhere along that number, and that's going to really be, you know, showcasing what's going on in the space, or at least for the lawsuit. I've also been trying to kind of check through, right? I made a little video about Binance's adoption of XRP a little while ago. People called it out to not be a big deal. But take a look at the article here, for example. Binance, in their most recent video over on the XRP ledger, called the XRP ledger the first major blockchain to be certifiably carbon neutral. And again, I don't quite remember if they said anything stupid, for example, in this video right here. But the fact that Binance Academy here also has a little video explaining what the XRP ledger is, is in my opinion, a really good thing. You know, they're explaining to people the difference between Ripple and XRP slash XRP ledger. It says right here, XRP ledger is friendly to our planet. <laughs> Let's go see to be certified, be carbon neutral. Network uses federal consensus protocol. Verified six or process to whatnot. This is actually very helpful for a lot of different people around this world. So I personally think it's beautiful. It's there to facilitate cross-border payments quickly, cheaply, and yada yada yada. It can also be used to transact uh, on XP's ledger decentralized exchange, maybe, or engage with tokenized assets. Yeah, yeah, beautifully, right? It also explains a lot of what the XP ledger can do: treasury payments, payrolls, other cross-border currencies. It explains. Even more about what, you know, what type of capabilities it has, for example, for NFTs and everything, you know, NFTs, stablecoins, um, CBDCs, everything can be built on there. It's explaining a lot, and I, I love this. And even though this is not game-changing by definition, what it showcases is that they're not having a hate campaign against XRP like some people imagined. The fact that Binance took it off from Binance US is a very much strategic move, because if they kept it on, it will most likely be worse for them. It's not because they really, really want to, guys. It's also not unique for Binance to make a video explaining what it is, is the fact that they're not leaving XRP or the XP ledger out, and they're not given a very, um, very much opinion of this is garbage, get, get out of this one, it's a centralized stupid system, which is Ripple, this, that, this, that, no, they're being very much objective about it, giving a very good explanation, and I really think it's beautiful that they did this. But yeah, guys, I forgot to say it actually throughout this video, but let me tell you guys again, I'm running a $10,000 crypto giveaway right now. If you want to enter, make sure you check out the link below, actually below this video. It's going to show up this right here. It's just a couple of different ways to enter. You can enter by retweeting something. You can enter by following me over on, uh, on or actually just checking out my YouTube channel, watching a video on TikTok, I guess. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. This is, by the way, this is not my choice, but I can't press follow me on TikTok or can't say follow me on YouTube. But make sure you just do that, right? If, if you want to be involved with the whole platform, you want to win some of my giveaways, I'm going to be doing a ton of them. So just make sure you follow me on all these platforms and check it out if this is what you enjoy, though, right? If this is not something you enjoy, don't follow. And I guess just do the giveaway as you please. But if you enjoy this stuff, make sure you also press that follow button instead of watching from the dark. It's the same thing as somebody watching your live stream without ever commenting something. He's just like lurking like this in the background. It's, it's okay. It's cool. But it's kind of weird if you think about it, you know? It's like uh, you're in a little friends group because that's kind of how I consider my live streams. You know, you guys come in, we all chat, we all chat bare <laughs> stupid stuff sometimes as well. And there's some people just looking at you, not saying anything, just kind of looking at you. And then maybe once you make a mistake, they're going to start typing or so. But most of the time, they're just watching you speak. 
It's like, just talk a little bit, man. I'll, I'll read what you say. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit. I have to keep just kind of staring at me like that. Then again, some people don't like talking. It's all good. Some people don't even have an account. It's all good. You guys are all welcome. Just saying, if you do have an account, just say hi. You know, announce your presence. Also, some people might point out that this uh, latest update from the Ripple lawsuit was a big win or anything like that. I personally don't uh, really think so. I don't think it's actually a big deal whatsoever. It's just the SEC saying they're fine with hiding some stuff like I described. And we've seen that a, a dozen times before. I will not make a title saying this is a big victory or so. I'm just going to say the next important date is September 13th. Or I thought it was 18th, but it could be 13th. Yeah, it's September 13th, just to quickly verify. That's the most important date that's coming up. You guys got to all watch for it. But if they're, they're hiding stuff or so, it's not really that big a deal in my opinion. And there was a little piece about CBDCs for the future. Officially, these guys are saying the statement of the year for crypto is not Powell's speech, but it's the speech or actually words regarding CBDCs. And all I have to say about CBDCs is indeed they're going to be extremely important. And I really still hope, but only one can can guess or, or expect that Ripple is going to play a big role in this system. You know, there's a lot of different crypto companies that can have an integral part in all of this. One of those is also Stellar. But uh, Kashkari comments on central bank digital currencies might define crypto's future you can see here uh president at the minneapolis fed views are his own all eyes are on jackson hole but the real statement of the summer came from neil kashkari quote i keep asking anybody to explain to me what a problem a cbdc is solving Ooh. and then uh, nick says i may not always agree with neil kashkari but he is absolutely correct when he points out that he can send anyone money with venmo you don't need a cbdc to do that but what about financial inclusion or cross-border payments? Again, Neil Kashkari is right. There's no evidence to suggest it will actually help here. Ooh, so maybe this is another beautiful use case for crypto on its own. Potentially here they're calling for a centralized entity like Venmo, which is again fine. It's just the discussion is, is being brought up again of why exactly a CBC, which again is why Ripple and a couple of other parties are in there explaining what the benefits of it could be. Then again, if you're asking me, why exactly would a CBDC be needed? I can't give you any answer. Well, how could it be useful? We can talk about this for a long time. Then again, if you're asking me the central question, is this solution for consumers? I'd say absolutely not. There are solutions for bigger institutions, bigger banks, and for that reason, it's good. Is it for the people? Absolutely not. Can we make money off of it, though? Ask people. Can we make use of it? Certainly. Which is, again, where a couple of players like Ripple could come in to make it more useful for the people. But at the end of the day, it's a beneficial solution for the upper echelon, for the upper layers. Not for you. <laughs> no, not for you. CBDCs are not for the people. You know, it's also not by the people. It's 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 made for the upper. Again, do you think you really notice, would notice that a CBDC exists in traditional day-to-day -day life? Probably not, you know. Depending on what type of CBDC they choose, you'd probably never even notice it exists. You know, you're not going to notice too much about it. And even if it uses crypto... Even for an entire future of crypto, if RippleNet, for example, gets the standard everywhere, you probably would still never notice that XRP is actually an underlying part of it all, which is still beautiful. Because if they think about it, it might become too difficult for them. Then again, if you ask people how banks work, I think 95% of the people you ask don't even know how that exactly works. They think the, the moment you put money into your bank, it's always there. But in reality, the moment you put it in, whoop, it's, it's lended out to somebody else, or at least they're investing it in something. And if you want to borrow it again, or oh, sorry, you want to take your money out, you're going to have to do a really big job, a really hard job. If you put $100,000 in right now, Good luck trying to get your $100,000 out. They'll be like, oh, wait a minute. Let's go and hit you with these three-week delays. Let's try to hit you with a couple of hidden fees, maybe. Hit you with a couple of, to make sure you don't take your money out because that's the entire system. But hey, that was it for right now. I don't want to actually make this story too long. See you guys later in another crypto video somewhere later today.